Today, I want to show you how you can get data from your Google Search Console into N8N. And afterwards, we will also have a quick look into one of my workflows that I am using for my websites in order to improve my articles. And before we can start with the workflow itself, it is important to set a few things up in the Google Cloud Console. And the first thing is to enable the API. So in this case, you need to go to the Google Cloud Console and then search here for Google Search Console. And as you can see, I have already enabled it. If you don't have it, then click on enable. Otherwise you won't be able to get any data. And there's also a second thing you have to keep in mind. If you are using your own email address, or let's say the same email address that you are also using for the Google Search Console, then you don't have to add here something. But in case you are handling it for a client or you're using another email address, then you have to add here a user with the permissions. So in this case, this person could do anything, but you can also set the person to an owner or also limit the access. Since I am using my own account, I don't have to do it. So then let's talk about the workflow. As you can see, it is really simple. In total, we have three nodes to get data from the Google Search Console. And I have added two another nodes to prepare the data so that you can also analyze it even better. And if we have a look into the first node, then we can see we have here a post method and we are using here the search analytics query endpoint. And in my template, which I will also share with you later, and we are using the endpoint search analytics query. And the only thing that you have to change here is the middle part. So the site URL. In this case, I am using mine. So you have to add this prefix followed by your domain. And then we need also to set up the authentication. And in this case, we can use a predefined credential type. So it's already available in N8N. And it is the Google OAuth 2 API. If you don't have it, then you can just create a new credential and most likely you have to do it. So let me show you how it works. And you can find the redirect URL, client ID, client secret in your Google Cloud Console under APIs and services. So as you can see, I created here our off client for my NNN workflows. And if you have already a client ID for a web application, then you can use this. Otherwise, you can also create one quickly. And you will find your client ID here and the client secret here. So in my case, I blurred it because it's sensitive data. And I would also recommend to never share it with any one. And if we go back, then we can see that we have also the scope and the scope can be found here under the O of two scopes. And there's also like scopes for other services, but we are only interested for now in the Google search console. And in total, we have two. So webmasters and webmasters read only. So if you take this one, then you would be able to submit a sitemap or also delete one. But I would recommend if you are only interested in the analytics data, always take webmasters read only because then you cannot break anything. So as an example, if we have a look at here, so the Google Search Console offers in total four different services. So like the search analytics, this is the endpoint that you can use to get like clicks, impressions, click through rate, queries for your website. Then you have like sitemaps. Obviously you can add a sitemap, remove a sitemap, or also request some information about it. Then you can add, remove, or get all your properties from your Google Search Console. And you have also the URL inspection. So in case you want to check if a page has been indexed or when was the last time that Google has crawled it, then you can use it as well. So here, read only is sufficient, read only is sufficient. And I'm not 100% sure, but most likely if you just like request information or like you just want to read the data, then you can also like list your sitemaps. But if you use like read only, then you would be never able to submit a sitemap or also not to delete something. So let's get back to the workflow. And in case you have any questions here, feel free to add them to the comments. So let's talk about this example. Here we can see I have set and start and end date. So in this case, we would get data from the 1st of March until the 10th of April. And we are only interested for now in the dimension for our queries. So we wouldn't see like the date or something. We'll just get, as you can see on the right side, as the key, the query, and the total clicks, impressions, click through rate and position, like this is also the average and also here's the average, but for this time period. And I also added a filter to the dimension. So in this case, I want to set a filter on the page and the page should be equal to this one. So in this case, it's my homepage. So let's have a look into another example. So here you can see it's really similar. We have also post the same endpoint, also the same credential, but here we have also as a dimension, the date. And if we execute it, then we can see 
that you get the clicks, impressions, click-through rate, position on a daily basis. And if we think about what we can do with it, then it's now really easy, for instance, to set up a rank tracking, but also to analyze the daily performance of your website. And since we are also using the dimension query, you can also check the performance of a given keyword. So let's say you have a focus keyword or also a few long tail keywords that you are trying to target with a given article, then it makes sense to use this request body because this one will enable you to get really detailed data as you would also do it in the Google Search Console. So let's have a look into the last node where we also get some data from the Google Search Console. And in this case, I have added the endpoint to inspect the URL. So if I execute it, then I can check if the site has been indexed and also when the last time Google has crawled it. So here we can see it's submitted and indexed and also the last time it got crawled was on the 5th of April. So let's have a look into the other two nodes like flattened page data and also flattened daily data. If we have a look on the input data, then we can see we have an array and here we have also like again an array. So it's kind of nested with rows and keys and we are only interested for a given query, the clicks, impressions, click through rate and also position. That is the reason why I added this code note because it flattens the data, it checks for the keys. And now for instance, you would be able to also save the data to a Google spreadsheet without having to clean it afterwards. And the other note is really similar, except that we have two keys. So as you can see, we have here the query and also the date. And if we execute it, then we get a nice array with the query date, clicks, impressions, click through rate and position on a daily level. So now let's have a look into one of the workflows where I'm using data from my Google Search Console and it is the workflow for the data-driven SEO optimization. So here I take as an input a link, so the URL to the given article, and then I generate a performance report. So I take data from the Google Search Console, analyze the queries, how many clicks did I get for a given keyword, what is the click per rate, the position for the keyword, and so on. And I also crawl my article so that the LLM has a better context, then I merge it and then provide it to, in this case, it's just GBT4 Omni Mini because it's really cheap. And now the large language model has real performance data of my website, the content of my article, and then it will create a report for me on how to improve it even more. And finally, it will convert it to an HTML file and save it in my Google Drive. And I can tell you that this workflow saves a lot of time because analyzing the data is kind of repetitive. You check always the data, or like the queries, which which are driving the traffic to your article, how is the click-through rate, and also if you have like some low-hanging fruits, so like keywords where you are like on the page two or like ranking 15 to 20, and then you try to add these keywords to your article in order to rank for them as well. And don't worry, you don't have to recreate this workflow because it's completely for free available. I have a GitHub repository where I share regularly free workflows. So in this case, it is this workflow. So you can simply download the JSON file, import to NNN and also use it. And they have also other workflows that are using data from the Google Search Console. So for instance, the Keyword Rank Tracker, I have a version for Keyword Rank Tracking with Postgres as well as for Google Sheets. And I will also put the link into the description. So feel free to use it. And in case you have any questions, feel free to add them to the comments. And that's it for today. See you in the next video.